And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys on Tap podcast. I am enjoying it. It's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's and also and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't bootleg. understand. There were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on, on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, was doing. I didn't realize it was just a pretend voice. Oh. Awesome, awesome. I'm so stoked. I can't tell you enough how stoked I am. Really? <laughs> yeah, th- I know it sounds crazy. There was like the Ragnar figure has been like something that I have stared at constantly. Uh, I like kick myself in the butt for missing certain things. Like, oh, dude. This. But it's like, it is so, so, so awesome. Dude, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Um, like, every time I hear it from like a creator or another collector, it's just like, first and foremost, I made this thing for me. There it <laughs> I is. Made there it, it is. I made it. I made it for me first. Yeah. And just by happenstance, other people actually like it. And yeah. every time that I hear somebody is stoked, I'm like, yes, yes. Oh my gosh! Hold that bad boy up one more time. Yeah. We're going to reference it more than this, but okay. I'm so stoked that it's here. There we yeah. go. Oh, and I've I got uh, a bunch of them over here, so I'll, I'll be pulling up different versions every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> so before we start anything, I like yeah. to break the ice. Super easy thing. Uh-huh. You tell – how old are you? I – oh, shit. How old am I? Um, <laughs> that wasn't even the hard question. No, no, no. Uh, like, I stopped counting after I turned 25. Oh, hey, um, that's okay. You're in your so maybe 30s? I'm, I'm 33. I'm 33, okay. I think. 33. I, so, I have another friend who's two weeks older than me, and yeah. I just ask him, how old are we? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I usually do the same thing. My best friend is uh, a, like a year and a couple months younger than me. And mm-hmm. most times, like I'll be talking, and he'll be like, you're not that old. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, sorry, my bad. So – uh, now that I know your age, this question was perfect. Growing up, tell me your thoughts, ins and outs of Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies. Oh, mm. I definitely had some. Um, I definitely went to McDonald's a couple times to try and find the McDonald's releases and everything. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was as into it as my other classmates and other kids in the neighborhood, but I definitely did have some. Uh, my younger brother uh you know he was really into stuffed animals just all around uh so he liked them a little bit more but um i'm i'm they were cool at the time yeah. i mean the time they are was, what they are. yeah they are what they are i uh, i like that you brought up the happy meal ones yeah recently i was looking i was gonna think of a project to do with the and they i saw a bunch of them in a thrift store mm-hmm. And I, it was funny. I was looking at them and I found a bunch of different ones and I was like putting them in a pile mm-hmm. and I would go find another one, put it in the pile, but it was still on the shelf. Like I still hadn't committed <laughs> and I was doing it. And then this lady, Karen haircut, she looked like uh, she collected beanie babies, yeah. walked up, put her thing up next to the shelf and just scooped them all in. And I was like, I can't yeah. fight you for it. Cause then you're going to know that I wanted them. So yeah. <laughs> damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And they were all like 30 cents. And I it was like, oh, oh it doesn't even it's it's really weird. So I, I it was that documentary that came out. Uh was it Netflix or the Beanie I, I forget, Mania? Yeah, the Beanie yeah. Mania. And uh I just recently started seeing uh some Twitch streamers auctioning them off and like reselling them because you know their grandparents passed yeah. away. And I, I just thought that was like, oh geez, we're back. We're back. <laughs> yeah, which is so which is crazy. I mean, this goes into like toy market stuff, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you did you watch the Beanie Mania? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. So, I I enjoyed it. 
one of the guys in there, they call him the Beanie Meanie or something like that. I don't know. He uh, was the one that was yeah, like yeah, crapping yeah. on people. Yeah. Um, he had made reference to it's basically like it's only worth what someone will pay for it, and like yeah. its value is only there from the secondary mm-hmm. market. Mm-hmm. Tell me that doesn't like kind of cut to the core of all of us though, because like all of us are so oh, dude. You like the secondary market will really uh you know stamp that financial worth on something yeah. um in, in every single aspect of like collecting or producing or anything like that and it's like if somebody you know since we live in a capitalist you know like if yeah. you know money equals worth mm-hmm. and uh, that's how we you know show and congratulate people by like you know applying that dollar sign to whatever they create so like oh dude yeah i i in in a perfect world we could all make toys and enjoy it for the craft and uh just enjoy and congratulate each other for just making cool stuff but there is that strive to you know make it economically feasible and it's (laughs) it's really tough (laughs) yeah i think about that a lot and then i think about um there, uh, I had a, I don't remember who came on. They said some phrase that cut me to my core as well. They said, mm-hmm. basically every toy maker or every figure maker or whatever you want to call it, we are mm-hmm. all just moving money around because we're oh, buying as well. It, it's a meme, uh, that I saw and it's, it, it's one of those art creator memes. It's yeah. like, Hey, we're getting really tired of passing the same hundred dollars around to each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, can somebody else start buying this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that when we do yeah. like toy shows or sell with DKE or do whatever, mm-hmm. like at, at designer con, how many times mm-hmm. do the artists, they're like, Hey, can someone watch my booth? I need to go buy stuff real quick. Oh, like, dude. Yeah, like, it's like, man, you're, that means you just spent like, you're not even going to break even now because of that. Dude. Yeah. You, the, the moment you step away from your booth, it's like a ticking time bomb of just like, Oh, yes. okay. Whatever money that you made is, now going to somebody else well like you also have to think what what are, what are you trying to do here yeah. are you trying to move units and get funds and like make money which is you know some people's sole ambition in this thing yeah uh, or are you out there trying to make cool stuff and collect cool stuff and support people doing cool things there we go like there's you know there okay so i have two things and then we'll get started we haven't yeah, even yeah, hit yeah. the interview part i yet. know i know it's <laughs> like so <laughs> they're like, I, I heard the story. I love TikTok. I love mm-hmm. TikTok so much. I don't know. It's stupid. I'm 31 years dude, old. And it's so dude, stupid. I, I am obsessed with it. I'm on it every single day. Like just go That's, on. Okay. So then <laughs> are we just like, you have your own TikTok account. Do you, you guys make videos and everything? Dude, I tried like a year ago yeah. and I just, I couldn't really, I have enough problems trying to do Instagram. Yep. and Twitter. And I'm just like, okay, for, for me, it's like, I'll go two weeks without posting anything. Cause I'm working. Yeah. It's one or the other. It's like, I am working or I'm posting and like, I really can't juggle both. And for me, you know, uh, I'm sure you get this too, as like a creator is like, yeah. I want it to like, you know, have a good frame, good lighting. Yeah. I want to make sure that this actually looks good. I don't want to be just shooting trash and like throwing it up. And then like, eventually i get like tired of it of just like overthinking of it and i'm just like hey i'm gonna post a picture of my socks deal with it (laughs) and then you're like my engagement was down it's like yeah you posted your socks bro yeah exactly uh only only 30 likes on that picture perfect and i I, (laughs) i'm trying to understand instagram and tiktok as a whole in general Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. uh Man, this wasn't even part of the two things I wanted to talk about. But all right, like, no, you're good. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> I keep thinking, like when, when I so with Instagram, getting ten yeah. percent like of your followers to like your thing, uh huh, is sometimes not achievable. And I learned that. So this week on the podcast, I have Ace mm-hmm. of Clay, mm-hmm. two hundred thousand followers, and some of his posts are getting like seven or eight thousand likes which is insane to me right Mm -hmm. 
And then, That's, yeah, <laughs> right. Like the number grows, but the number yeah. also grows. Yeah. And so for me, like I have 2,100 followers on my creator account and mm-hmm. I'll post something and pull 30 likes. And in my heart, I'm like, that hurts. Yeah. Then it's like, I'm getting the same percentages as other people, but it just is such a small mm-hmm. number. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, something the bigger the bigger the pool, you know, you could have a million, but yeah. it would still only be seven, ten percent of that million. Yeah. Um, it's just a bigger pool to pull from. And like I, you know, whenever I go on Instagram, I still look at cool stuff and be like, oh, that's neat. Yeah. I want to sit there and like every single one. But you I, don't. I don't. I Maybe save I. I save a lot of stuff though. And then I try messaging those people and be like, hey, that is actually really cool. What what painting technique did you use for the elbows yeah. or or whatever? But I'm an insane person like that where I'm just constantly like, hey, what, what's up? You want to talk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and with that, it's like all so on Toys on Tap, my favorite thing is these like toy videos I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Where it's mm-hmm. like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen. I do all kinds no, of No, I, I, I caught a couple of them. And I know that you're reposting them to Instagram. And I've been meaning to hop on TikTok and follow you and interact yeah. with some of them. And so, yeah. And it's been fun. And on so what's crazy to me, 900 and something followers on Toys on Tap. But I'll get like 3,000 views on those. But then you Dude. go to like tiktok and it's like maybe 200 and something followers and i can't get traction for shit Mm -hmm. i don't know what i don't know i don't know the algorithm i don't know dude it it's since it's so saturated and so curated um once you find that niche once you like hit that one viral tiktok or that one interaction it's just going to be a tidal wave to all your other videos like i dude i i was following this one guy because he uh what, what fuck what was it um it, it was like a dead tiktok you know maybe mm-hmm. 50 followers and then he did uh some like kind of skit kind of thing mm-hmm. um and it was about uh the theme of, of his tiktok i sorry i'm really blanking on it right now but uh, I went and tuned back in and that thing had like 50,000 likes and, you know, yeah. like brought the the account back from the dead. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it only takes that. And then you're like, okay, well, how did that work? Why did that work? Was it the sound that I used? Was it yeah. the cut? Was it the topic? Was it so trying to figure it out? Yeah. So occasionally like i'll find sorry go on, no, go on go on wait no i want to hear it you'll find what you'll find no, no, no. I'll, I'll find a a tick tock like a an account that has like guys doing time-lapse illustrations and like yeah. beautiful paintings and stuff like that and they have like 20 followers yeah like, and they're great nothing. and they're amazing and yeah. great but you know whatever tags or whatever whatever songs they use they don't gain any traction but then i'll also find other accounts of people like trying to do that skit stuff and it's 400 videos of the same thing of like them in the mirror, like talking to themselves and like trying to parrot other videos. And it's, uh, it's, it's very strange. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, I mean, I I don't know, whatever it is. I still love TikTok. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Um, addicted to it. (laughs) Yeah. And, and and people that are like, they're like, (laughs) excuse me. They're like, Hey, why, like, what are you watching it for? Cause Mm -hmm. I love the dopamine rush. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the chase. Yeah. It's, I will chase that dragon Mm -hmm. until Mm -hmm. my dying day dude oh i i like oh it's like I open up tiktok and three hours goes by it's like yes. wait what and what? each video is one minute long 30 oh, seconds sometimes yeah. and, and you're still like i saw what gets me is at the end of three hours you could say like i saw 200 videos i remember yeah. nothing yeah it's just like the uh, automatic reset and yep. maybe one one or two of those like you know you're in the coal mines mm-hmm. you know every time every now and then you get a diamond and then you're like ah i almost lost my mind because yeah. i was laughing so hard or or whatever there's a couple but, that like i've reached out to on instagram and i'm like hey i want to turn you into a toy because you are too funny dude it's that, so awesome that's that's cool that's um really cool. So, uh, and so the two things I wanted to get to after mm. our little sidetrack. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the one thing I saw, there's a principle that actually goes around with money making or uh, money, uh, what is it? Debt collecting or something where um, there's a guy that owes money. Someone pays him 
and he owes money to a debt collector and then he gives that same amount of money to that debt collector and they keep going and then eventually the last person owes the original guy money and it was like a hundred dollars moved through like 30 people but oh, no wow. one but nothing happened no debt was forgiven nothing and so it was like it just kept going isn't it weird? It's so insane. Money is imaginary, and I'm here to tell you on Toys on Tap that we don't believe in money. <laughs> uh, the last thing uh, is, I don't know if you've seen them. It's these, I don't, I don't even know who created them. It's on my phone, and I stare at them all the time. I need to buy it. There's five series, and each series has five birds in it, and they're doing like a karate stance, each one of them. And they're like these art toys, and I don't know what it is. But we were talking. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know that one. Well, dude, I look at toys all day, every day. Yeah, so it's like I'm I've probably it seen you. it in passing. Yeah, and there but... it's phenomenal. But yeah. it it reminded me, it. I got thinking of it because we had talked about like, oh, you want to collect cool shit or like mm-hmm. make, mm-hmm. and that is, it means nothing to anyone. My mm-hmm. wife's parents will come over, they'll see it on my wall, and they're like, "You're uh, an idiot." Yeah. This. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, but you don't understand what it took for them to get to a factory that made that. You have dude, no idea. Dude, dude, yeah. dude, that you don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the phrase I start with. You don't understand. Thank you. I appreciate your input. Yeah. Yeah. You have added nothing to my life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're here for you. I'm stoked about it. Before we go any further, please introduce yeah. yourself. Tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Christopher Hillseth. I um, am co-owner of Last Fashion Studios with my business partner, Wes Allard, and I make uh, kaiju toys. Um, yeah, you do. One of which is our little kaiju buddy, Ragnar. Mm. Ragnar! Oh, I love it. Yeah, so he's a character in the comic book series, Ragnar, and uh, he's a kaiju that has a, a big cannon stuck on his arm. and yeah it's a crazy long story and i could definitely get really into it really quick but yeah. uh, i'm sure you have other questions for me <laughs> oh we're going there we're, that, we're gonna save a yeah. question for this for that for sure oh, yeah um so before we go anywhere towards toy making mm-hmm. uh, i love to start and to give people kind of a view of where mm-hmm. you started so tell me growing up what was that relationship with toys like what's that looking like Oh man, I know you sent me those questions and like I started making little notes and, uh, you know, it's been, you know, a good couple of years since I've actually thought about the origins of my toy collecting, but, um, we interrupted this broadcast of toys on top to bring you this. Meanwhile, in a galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have an engine failure. We almost crash land on DKE toy planet. Oh my, we're doomed. Wait! Salvation! Hooray! We're saved in DLV2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE Toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! Pretty much. uh, So I was born in 89, you know, tail end of the the 80s. Uh, So there was, I have three older sisters and a a lot of their toys that they used to have, um, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think some of them had Transformers and like a whole bunch of, you know, the the big ones, Um, you know, G.I. Joe and all that stuff. Like I definitely had some hand-me-downs of that. And I was a serious Transformers collector serious transformers collector from the beginning um, including oh, from all the series and the g1 things? g2 g3 were like my prime time okay. and then uh i did get into beast wars pretty heavily and then yeah. kind of fell off because of i'm sure we'll get into it like family ups and downs but um for the most part uh you know Transformers model kits, monster model kits. Uh, I had those infamous uh, diecast fighter jets that everybody had and broke that I yeah. think they're called like steel screamers or, mm-hmm. or something like that, where no matter which kid that you talk to, all the propellers were broken off of all the planes. Just like nobody yeah. had a complete thing. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Power Rangers, definitely. I was a part of the Power Rangers fan club. 
um, you know, had the mail away sci science certificates and everything, yep. uh, you know, uh, creep, you know, definitely I've got scars from creepy crawlers, uh, you know, putting those, those die cast you. molds and yeah. burning your hand, pulling them out. That was probably my, my number one first experience of like, actually like toy making, yeah. of getting scarred for life by those. <laughs> <laughs> I, for sure, looking back i remember seeing those commercials and it's like what the hell were we doing dude like i i was looking up the the toys this morning and i was just like jesus it's like a repurposed easy bake oven that we just put metal in and just hope for the best and we were left to our own devices like yeah i didn't really have any parental you know oversight on most of that stuff and like uh yes hot is hot don't touch hot but toy in hot thing so gotta get yeah toy. like don't touch hot <laughs> which means i need to touch hot yes so, <laughs> it was definitely a learning educational you know toy yeah for sure um let's see uh what else there is snailians mm -hmm. uh a lot of people don't know about snailians do you know about snailians yep oh god yes yes all right i owned none but oh, I, I had friends that had, and I was like, whoa, what are those? Yeah, dude, like yeah. the mecha, like snail alien robot things. They're so cool. Yeah. Um, Z bots. I'm sure mm -hmm. you know Z bots. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you ever have battle planets? Do you know what battle planets are? So it was kind of around the like the micro machine, so. Mighty Max era, like the next version generation of that mm -hmm. it was kind of like one of those like okay they had a toy let's try and make a tv show but it didn't mm -hmm. quite work there might have been like one or two episodes i i actually don't remember it's more of a fever dream for me but i just remember these like weird you know it, it's the frost planet and it opens yeah. up and it looks like a frost cavern where it's the lava oh, planet yeah. and it's a giant volcano blah 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 um Let's see what what else did I have? I, of course, Mighty Max, Legos, yeah. Robotech, uh, Exo Squad, and you know, a whole bunch of other random stuff that I can't remember. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you That's... would you say that like you just got lucky and your parents were like, yeah, let's just buy whatever oh, toys we can. Yeah. So I did have a lot of toys growing up. That that is for sure. Like when mm -hmm. I was a little kid, um, I definitely was uh. Um, I guess privileged enough to to mm. have parents that bought me toys like yeah. that. Um, later in life, I learned that it was more of just like you know, uh, kind of like a babysitting technique. Uh, so okay. you know, uh, family of five. My parents yeah. were you know in in the eighties and the seventies. They were heavy partiers. Uh, mm -hmm. They were alcoholics and kind of just like were off on their own most of the time. So you know, whatever they could get to like kind of. Of course, my mom would buy me stuff because she loved me and like cared yeah. about me and, you know, wanted me to, uh, uh, you know, get, get stuff and be happy. But it was from, from like hindsight, it was definitely like, okay, let's get them some stuff to play so we can go out yeah. and go play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't always like that later on in life, you know, it got a little rough, but, mm. um, yeah, uh, a lot of the crazy cool toys uh, back in the 90s and 80s. Did you get um, to a point where you, um, we all go through that phase, right? We either get rid of toys, toys get given away, we find girls, like whatever that is. What was that point for you? For me, that was 12 years old. So yeah. uh, I, I guess it kind of happened early on uh, for me in my toy collecting career. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so my parents got divorced and it was a utter war of yeah. a divorce that, you know, went all the way up until I was 18, um, Oof. from 12 to 18. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much you want to know on, on this toy podcast, but, uh, it's up to you. I, I, oh, okay. I can, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can relate to the divorce and the torn home. So yeah. however much so, you want to yeah. share. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with sharing, but like, as far as your listeners, I guess, I, I don't know. They're about to get a backseat to it. And I love it. Yeah. So, um, Parents got divorced. Uh, my mom went into rehab and, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully uh, she's, you know, uh, sober now um, and she's doing quite well. And I absolutely love her for it. Um, however, 
the the divorce when uh it happened you know the house was sold off the yeah. uh you know i got the speech from my dad w- that was like uh you're no longer a kid you don't need these anymore yep type of thing and you know what like i couldn't put into some small boxes got either given away trash thrown like donated like late like all that stuff so and for me it was like it was really tragic because like you know i had a couple friends Mm -hmm. but like everybody's got that one toy that is like your buddy like either optimus prime or whoever like you know and so a lot of my toys i spent a lot of time with uh you know creating backstories you know digging trenches in the yard making like you know the the hoth you know battle and like you know recreating all the cool movies that i saw and spent a lot of time with them but uh you know having all that stuff like ripped away uh you know definitely oh yeah totally so there was like a lot of ups and downs for a couple years of me like uh not having toys or comic books or anything like that and then when i was like 14 or 15 um i think this is when my mom was she finally got like a an apartment a decent apartment Mm -hmm. and uh we got enough money for her to take me to my first comic book convention and I was like yeah. so psyched. Oh my God, at Pasadena. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of crazy cool collectors. I saw that they had Gundam kits and like other stuff, and I was so psyched. And like this is definitely like one of my my favorite stories to tell because uh I am a huge uh Rocketeer fan mm-hmm. and like true sense of the word literally like i literally rented that movie over 200 plus times my mom even tried buying it from blockbuster they said no because it's their only copy and it went (laughs) out of print and i was the only one renting it so like they they knew it was a, a cash cow for them so um like, you know, even when I was a little kid, my mom made uh, like a paper mache jet pack covered in tin foil yeah. with like little streamers. And I would run around, you know, pretending that I was Cliff Secord and like saving Jenny and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so when I went to that that convention, um, I was looking at these Gundam kits and I was like, oh, this is so cool. It's got a jet pack. And, you know, I started going like this with the box and the the guy who's you know slinging the kits he's like oh you like jetpacks i'm like yeah it's like do you like the rocketeer i was like yeah of course well look behind you dave stevens is sitting at that booth and he created the rocketeer holy moly and like one of the first times that I ever felt like jumping out of my skin, mm-hmm. like my whole body was on fire. Like I was getting chased by a tiger Yeah. and like, I slowly like turned and I was like, Oh my God. And you know, classic Dave Stevens, if you ever seen him really cool dude, just emanating, just like, I am the yeah. coolest dude in the room uh, with like uh, a really hot, like Betty page esque mm-hmm. lady friends. I don't know if they were dating, but she was hanging out with him. And so I walk over to him and I'm like, oh, hey, Dave Stevens or Mr. <laughs> Stevens. Oh, I'm a really big fan. And like, just totally, you know, starstruck, you know, yeah. hero. And the guy was so kind to me. And he's like, oh, awesome. You really like the Rocketeer? I'm like, yeah, I can quote the movie right now. He's like, oh, that's so cool. Here, have a poster. I'm like, oh, my God. Can you sign this? It's my birthday today. He's like, it's your birthday. Here, take every single one of these Rocketeer prints. I'm going to sign all of them. Here's a pen. And, you know, my mom came over and she flipped out even more than I was. Because it was like, you don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You don't know how many times this kid has watched this movie but uh like that that whole experience like definitely was like a light at the end of the tunnel of just like uh his kind of you know embracing the the fan and kind of love and respect of that kind of like relationship of just like being a really cool down-to-earth dude uh really 
was just like, I, I want to be in this space. I, yeah. I want to get back to the comic books and get back to the toys. And uh, ever since then, it was like, you know, life stuff was happening, but I was always trying to reach back and either draw comics or get back mm-hmm. into it that way. Man, you had right. tears like coming like up to oh, my dude, eyes. Dude, dude, like holy it, moly, very emotional. <laughs> yeah, like like I can't imagine like holding on or like having that kind of experience, especially with mm-hmm. what's going on. Mm-hmm. To have that experience to pull yeah. you out of it almost pulls you out of the the reality of what's going on. Oh yeah, it gives you a whole new reality of like, hey, this cool ass guy just wants to see you, dude. Yeah, and like he was not like all right next kid or or next yeah. person he actually sat there and was just like listening to me and like my story of just like how much i loved his characters and the movie that he made and uh you know he yeah it was just like he was such a really cool person um and i'm so glad that i met him because uh, apparently at the time he had stomach cancer and I think he passed away the the next year after that or maybe two years after that but um probably one of the greatest meetings of like you know they say don't meet your heroes but like that guy yeah 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 go meet them find out find out if they're cool like because you you might just have that kind of interaction where it's like I'm gonna remember that till my dying breath of just the kindness do you still have those prints, by the way? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I can pull one off of the wall real quick. Oh, I don't my know gosh, if you do yes. video. Yeah, let's do uh, it. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, man. I've got like a little Rocketeer shrine set up. Uh, oh, that's actually a little taller than. Hold on. Give me like a minute. There we go. First me, now it's you. <laughs> Maybe I will leave some of this in there. E- equal, equal. Oh, equal. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I fall down and then just can't get back up. <laughs> well, I'm going to record from yeah. you on the ground. So if you okay. get down, I'm sorry. All right. So hopefully there's not too much glare. And my mom had the, like, going back to my mom, yeah. I, again, if, if I could dedicate my episode to anybody, it's her. She but she, she oh. even got this yeah. thing framed. And oh it's, my gosh. it's beautiful. I, I don't know if you could read it, but it says, happy birthday, Chris, oh my in there somewhere. Gosh. But yeah, this thing. It's beautiful. Oh, so good. So you're at this point where you get these dope prints. Um, yeah. Your mom has it framed and you guys are having this, this cool moment between you and your mom too in the instability yeah. that's happening. At what point do you start clicking back in with toys? So um when I got my first job, uh, so it was kind of like a, a, a slow buildup over a couple of years. Okay. And it was kind of like different industries handshaking into a, a, another one. Yeah. And I had gotten my, my first job at 16 because, uh, you know, we were broke and, um, you know, families on welfare from time to time. And, yeah. you know, it was tough making ends meet. And my mom was just like, you got to get a job so you can pay for your stuff and put money for groceries and uh, start helping with rent, blah, blah, blah. So I got a job at uh, the Lemley in Pasadena. It's a little independent uh, movie theater. And it was like the best first job getting into, you know, independent movies and foreign films and all that stuff. And I was working there for, you know, the course of the next five years of working there and going to school and going to college. So I wanted to get into film. And uh, as I graduated high school, uh, I started uh, working on independent movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I started getting really into the prop making side of things. Yeah. And uh, I worked on a couple commercials uh, for like Capital One and uh, nice. a couple other things. And uh, it started really dawning on me that, you know, for film you can definitely specialize. You can mm-hmm. be, you know, the the camera team or or, or whatever. But like if you are able to just be the Swiss army knife and be able to sculpt, draw, 
graphic design, do this and do this, do this. You're going to have so much more work yeah. coming your way. So um, I could draw a little bit. I could paint a little bit. And uh, the only thing that I really hadn't tried in a while was sculpting. And so I went to Art Center and they had this like uh, fundamentals, classical, uh, like traditional art class taught by Christopher Slatoff. Mm -hmm. And he's a famous traditional uh, sculptor. And he does like a lot of these amazing bronze work statues for like colleges and cathedrals. And you can see his, he did George Pepperdine for Pepperdine mm. University. And uh, he did like the famous Illustrated Man and actually helped, uh, you know, re-sculpt that, that plaster. And um, anyways, uh, I got an apprenticeship with Mr. Slatoff, uh, Chris, and uh, um, he had like a little studio at this foundry in, um, I think it was technically Glendale. It's like at the end of the two, like Burbank, Atwater, mm. like that kind of area. And um, it was a foundry and like they were doing metal casting and making statues and i saw what other artists were doing and you know there was street art and there was all this kind of stuff and i was dating this girl at the time and uh i don't know if i should say her dad's name but uh he <laughs> was a uh a really uh he was a toy sculptor Okay. And, you know, he did prototyping in the toy industry for a lot of the big names of General Giant, Sideshow, and all the other guys. And he helped out a lot of other street artists create their works and do, you know, full scale statues and whatnot. And that bond between yeah. my ex girlfriend's dad and myself over sculpting. Uh, kind of like started adjusting my 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 perspective of like what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and like then um, he started showing me uh, I guess he worked with uh, um, I think it was Nathan Hamill like uh, his original Boris uh, squirrel uh, character and like um, one of the first designer cons that I ever went to was like I think 2009 Wow. Um, in the really small, small room uh, mm -hmm. where it was like just a handful of graffiti artists and like some resin slingers and like yeah. some printmakers. Like it was one of the first ones. And uh, that was kind of like after that first designer con, it was like, oh, OK, this is how where do, I'm at. How do I get into this? Yeah, this is the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Unfortunately, the, the relationship with that, that girl, you know, ended and, um, you know, I just got the bug of like wanting to create cool stuff and yeah. like either be pop uh, culture, you know, like the graffiti street style, uh, like the Donnie or, or, or whatever, or, mm -hmm. you know, more sci-fi fantasy s you know, statues. So I started looking for jobs, uh, you know, with companies that I had seen, um, and one of them was Gentle Giant. And that was my first kind of real job in the industry. However, I, I just work customer service. Uh. I was, I was the, but hey, the, you know, the, the trajectory of that job, yeah. um, you know, what was, you know, it was, it was good. Yeah. It, it, you know, in hindsight, you know, there is problems with the company and, you know, there's personalities and all that stuff, you know, like with every, you know, big company, you're going to run into those type of people. But uh, the exposure to all the artists there, the exposure to all the conventions uh, that I went to because of it was monumental in like my growth and understanding of like the business side yeah. of it. So I started as a customer service rep, mm -hmm. and then I was on every single forum, statue forum, uh, Rebel Scum, uh, like yes, uh, Scum. Toy Arc, you know, yeah. all of them. I was the main guy. You you can go to my old threads still on those websites, and I'm Dreamwalker. That, that's it. my handle. So if you look that up, you'll still see me, like, uh, hanging out in there. You need to but, log in. and <laughs> just be like, I'm back. <laughs> oh, occasionally I pop into the, the old thread on uh, rebel scum um like 
I was so in it with the customers and like, I cared so much about those people. Uh, You know, a lot of them were very misunderstood. You know, a lot of them were like collecting was their life and that's how they expressed themselves. And, you know, some of them had disabilities where they couldn't speak or, you know, it it was a hard time communicating, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just like we are now. So they they would often be kind of like, boxed into just only being able to type or even only being able to tell somebody to type for them on these forums yeah and these guys were like of course they were particular about their stuff Mm -hmm. they're they're like if some paint apps were wrong or the packaging was damaged and it's like their collection was a reflection of themselves so if the pieces weren't perfect they themselves were in, in in their yeah. mind, it was like, you know, they, they didn't want to be viewed as incomplete or broken mm-hmm. um, or, or whatever. But um, so with, with, with all that, like uh, with the customer outreach and like the, the forums and all that stuff, they, they eventually noticed like, oh, psh, dude, you're, you're PR. Like you're, here's the social media accounts. Like they're yeah. dead anyways. We don't know how to use Instagram or Twitter. Like they barely had like a couple hundred uh, followers on each one. And I eventually took that stuff and just ran with it. And mm-hmm. like, you know, there wasn't a formula. There was like, like any partnerships that they had or anything like that. Um, and they barely posted pictures on there. So I took it upon myself to try and make it as fun as possible, you know, do contest, uh, outreach to the Nerdist or Collider or, or, you know, actually outreach to like all the partners and uh, go to movie premier- premieres and try and have our statues and stuff out there yeah. and like, uh, you know, reach out to the illustrators that created the style of the sculpt that, you know, just make it fun. Yeah. Um, as time went on, uh, I eventually, you know, the position that I had, I got to work on some movies uh, for like photogrammetry and all that stuff. But uh, I was always in the background trying to submit my own concepts or give my own ideas mm-hmm. or like uh, the one and only concept that ever got like greenlit or approved was uh, a part of this one um minibus toy line that they had created to kind of make a more economically available as they said a cheaper yeah. <laughs> cheaper version of their their minibus and essentially they just took the arms off and, and like was made your it, suggestion not no 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 that wasn't okay. my suggestion my suggestion since they were like the old grecian style minibus mm-hmm. Or, or busts uh, that we should do like a Roman emperor style. And like oh. the only character that I can think of that would be able to pull that off and still be their character was Deadpool. Mm-hmm. So I submitted a Caesar Deadpool concept and it got approved by Marvel. And, uh, you know, I, I was able to like help oversee the, the production and like the paint work and, uh, it was pretty cool. And I eventually awesome. was able to give Rob Liefeld one and hang out with him and, yeah. uh, Tim Miller. And, uh, yeah, it was, that was like the first like official, all right, you got something produced. Yeah. What's I'm here. Next? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Awesome. So you're behind yeah. the scenes and you're still mm-hmm. just chipping away. You get this nice, this what what is like a taste of victory oh yeah and like then you i start chasing right dude i like i didn't know how to really paint figures yeah. but like on my lunch breaks i sat with a paint crew like the paint division Mm -hmm. and learned every single thing that I could you know I'd bring in like old action figures or like a resin kit that I bought at Monster Palooza Mm -hmm. and like you know I want to do this effect and like you know shout out to uh, Adam Greeley, Chase Zuma, you know Scott Ackers, Mr. Beardy, all those guys Mm -hmm. they really helped me a lot to to push forward my my skill and like just make it a mess of things. (laughs) So I, you know, on my lunch breaks, I was visiting them and then like, you know, there's like the top tier sculptors in the business hanging out in cubicles. And of course, like me, I just go over and start talking to them. I'm sorry if I annoyed any one of you guys, but I just wanted to learn how to do this stuff. Yeah. (laughs)
<laughs> but yeah, like it was training. It was like the, there was definitely no like support in that like a lot of the the managers and like the the management uh was just like stay in your your lane uh stay in your cubicle like do not talk to other people but i made it a point to like just fuck break it. that rule yeah. yeah come on man like yeah. we're making toys <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about <laughs> so at what point uh as you're going through here at what point yeah. did you kind of realize like man this isn't where i'm staying i need to get out of here and keep um going. so the company Challenge Giant, uh, like they got sold almost like a year or a year or two after I started working there. Mm -hmm. And it was a slow decline of over corporatization. Like yeah. everything was way more formal. The life, like the little like light that was in the building started to get sucked out. And like people started kind of like eating each other, blaming each other for shortcomings and whatnot. And, uh, it was just not an environment that I wanted to be a part of. So I was like, you know what? There's other toy companies. I, well, a lot of the people that I do like are starting to leave and I don't want to be here for like the end. Like I, I want to keep making cool stuff and I don't want to be beaten down by you. Yeah. Um, so I bailed. I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to go. So uh, after that, I had a... Uh, Worked for a couple smaller toy companies consulting with the, the knowledge that I did acquire working at Gel Giant and slowly but surely, you know, uh, I started doing some prototyping. I started, yeah. you know, sculpting. I started painting for other people. Um, I started brokering jobs for other independent artists like, oh, dude, yeah. this guy needs a sculpt, you know, uh, and of course, like in the beginning, I was bad at it. I was just like, hey, can you throw me a couple, like a hundred bucks for, yeah. for this $8,000 sculpt that you just did uh, and, you know, didn't have agreements signed or anything like that and yeah. kind of like crash and burn on a couple deals but uh you know just kept on trudging through until the point where I was like you know what um I've had uh CEOs of companies of the big ones like I'm we'll talk i don't want yeah. to name too many names because you know there's probably already some bad blood <laughs> i well actually i wouldn't say bad blood but like i am uh a character uh yeah. i i can be blunt and i i'm very yeah. energetic and i want to do things and uh and i acquire knowledge and information rather quickly yeah so some in some cases some people think that is kind of a liability where mm. uh you know i've had uh resumes that were the manager of the division says yes i have a job for you mm -hmm. we want to hire you at the end of the month and then they kind of look at my my sheet and everything and then radio silence and that mm. was for all the big ones like just all of them yeah all of them and you know i started asking you know my my friends like what what's the deal they're like oh i don't know man i just uh i don't know uh something i'm like yeah. shit who did i fucking piss off or what, what happened did i just not nail that interview correctly and you know it got to the point where like i had so many uh of these these companies say like you know in order to make toys, you have to work for us, but we don't want you to work for us. And it, I'm Weird. like, was very punk rock about it. I was like, you know what? If I can't make toys with you, I'm just going to make toys with me and yeah. I'm going to do it myself. And, you know, got went to Reynolds, uh, you know, advanced materials and talked to all the people there, learned uh, all the material data sheets and, you know, saw that, okay, this is how you do resin. This is how you do, yeah. uh, you know, the foam. This is how you do the, the, the chibi rubber and all that stuff. And I just started, you know, thinking of like a character. So I was like, uh, what year are we at right now? I think 2016. Yeah. Okay, 2016. So you, yeah. you have unconventionally absorbed so much knowledge painting sculpting printing yeah. like all yeah. these things yeah no toy company wants you well i i don't know for sure maybe it was some <laughs> hr thing yeah. but uh 
let's just say the the I, I have personal cards from presidents of companies with their cell phone numbers and they they've handed it to me at shows it's like call me i need to hire you oh my and gosh then, I love and that. then nothing happened yeah <laughs> they talk to someone that's like well maybe not and you're like whoa hey yeah uh maybe me yeah mr man says yeah. it's a go so yeah like what's hr got to do with it uh, <laughs> And then you get to, you just immediately, you, you seem to have a mentality that it's like lead, follow, or like get out of my way, but I'm going to do what I want to chase yeah, after. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you head to Reynolds. I head to Reynolds and like pretty much on my way to Reynolds, I'm like thinking of like characters of, you yeah. know, what, what, what am I going to make? Like, am I going to do resin kits? You know, I can do resin kits. I can, you know screw around and make like a weird alien thing and try and hawk it at monster palooza with all the other guys trying to do that um which is awesome i buy plenty of them uh keep doing it keep doing it i yeah. want all those resin kits i'm not talking shit about any of you guys uh but then it kind of like i had just done a gamera montage like movie a uh, montage of yeah, just yeah. like I I watched every single one that I could without my eyes bleeding, <laughs> and <laughs> and so you know typical LA fashion I run into traffic on the way mm -hmm. over trying to get some material and then it was just like oh uh what is the kaiju that I want to destroy all these cars in front of me so I can go get the material. And first it was Gamera, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, I want Gamera. But, and then I was starting thinking like, uh, you know, I, I actually want to make my own. My, like, I don't yeah. want to just do a, a bootleg or, or like a kit bash of, you know, a Gamera figure. And um, I started creating the story of just like, okay, this, uh, has there ever been like a a kaiju story from like the kaiju's perspective and their inner voice? And there probably has prior to me thinking of Ragnar, but yeah. I wasn't exposed to it or know of any one of them. And if mm -hmm. you guys have recommendations, please send them my way. There but um, and besides being another turtle kaiju, I was like, how can I make this guy different? Yeah. How can I make them a little unique? And so I started thinking of like the the, the cannon. Okay, mm -hmm. he's like part mecha. Okay, well, how did he get the cannon? Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was like I was at Reynolds. Uh, so I started gathering material. <laughs> you basically didn't even focus on driving. No, you no just... like I time travel all the time, man. Yeah. It, ADHD brand, like, Constantly. you know, like yep. it is a constant carousel of movies comic books uh flashes of just craziness all the yeah. time and, before we go any further yeah. you said kaiju yeah. um i know a little bit about kaiju how it's like mm -hmm. based on the japanese monsters and all that mm -hmm. stuff yeah. uh do you want to go in a little bit of depth uh in case someone's like what where what's kaiju how well, we... like like just the basics kaiju just means like big monster yeah and um for like uh, your your layman it's like okay godzilla mm -hmm. godzilla fucking superman of the kaiju world like he he's a big monster he's a kaiju yeah so uh like with ultraman or like any of the super si sentai stuff or like any of that like there are kaijus which are generally big monsters that come from the world mm -hmm. and you know there there's like some people that will be like oh well uh all of them are kaiju or like yeah. all the monsters that they fight well then there's the other people that are like no 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 those are aliens no 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 that's a celestial being yeah no yeah, no yeah. no that's like okay cool cool in my They're mind monsters, clifford yeah. the big red dog is a kaiju Oh, like. <laughs> that's the kaiju we need right there. And so you have this idea, you think of, yeah. you head to Reynolds with yeah. the idea. Yeah. As And it's your first toy mm. that comes out. Yeah. And longevity, it's still here today. You're still producing yes. things. Yeah. Yeah. So boy, you, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, like what are you doing at Reynolds? Are you basically like, I have an idea, I want to do this, this is what it is one moment yeah, yeah. I, I, so I, have to get, I have to get the original one because uh like boy man my friends were so supportive and like <laughs> i look back at this thing and i'm just like 
Okay. Show me the so, beauty. It's this guy. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm into it. This thing weighs three pounds. And it was 11, 11 pieces that I individually casted. And I made 25 of these as my first toy. You're sadistic. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all, is it jointed so they move and everything? No, no, no. Oh. It's a statue. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my friends are just like, you've got an idea. Uh, go for it. Nobody's yeah. going to stop you. And I'm just like, I've got to figure it out. So, uh, mm, you know, crap. I essentially, like, I was so gung-ho with, like, you know, a and I still into this day of mm-hmm. just like, and you, you kind of have to be yeah. with making something that this, like with the longevity of just like, I know, I know what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I know the type of business that I want to create. And I know the, the type of things that I want to do, uh, producing toys, doing art galleries and blah, 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 everything in between. Yeah. But having that initial like confidence of like, no matter what I do, I just yeah. have to keep going and i will eventually get better so with that in mind i got a credit card <laughs> i know where this is headed i know where this is headed. let's do it where are you going and i maxed that shit out and essentially sent myself through toy making school of just getting all the material for this guy buying zbrush buying a 3d yeah. printer uh, getting all the paints, making the mistakes, and losing my goddamn mind. Yep. Uh, but with with within all that, there there's those beautiful moments of like, uh, I make the first model of Ragnar, which mm-hmm. which will become this guy, and having them 3D printed on a printer that I purchased. Like this is all me, mm-hmm. and like having the first 3D print is like, oh my god. Yep. Oh my God. This and is no crazy. one's as excited as you are. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nobody. Uh, other than like the other toy guys yeah. that are working for the larger companies are like, yeah, good job. Yeah. Keep going. Punk rock. But for, for me, it was fucking monumental. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I did it. So take that thing. Uh, lean on a couple of friends to help me clean it up. Gabriel Garcia, you are a number one with this. Shout out to Gabe, uh, who he is the director of uh, Diamond Comic Collectibles right now or oh. of production. Yeah. Uh, wow. So he helped me clean up, you know, some of the the original pieces and uh, you know gave me some advice on like some molding and casting. Yeah. And like a lot of the 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 advice that I got wasn't like people teaching me step by step. Mm -hmm. It was more of like, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. And if you can run through this and if you get it, I'll give you a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, so I ran with it and I started casting, bought pressure pots, went on YouTube, learned how to make my own pressure pot with the infamous Harbor Freight hundred dollar thing. Yeah. I got Um, one right now. Oh man. Mm. uh and there was a moment where i had put all this time and all like thousands of dollars Mm. of materials and all this shit and i had finished and i'm and it was like a a saturday morning at like nine nine in the morning and there was like a little bit of a mist and i was probably uh maybe a little lightheaded from all the crystal clear that i had sprayed as we are over. yeah, yeah a- as you get yeah and i'm listening to you know epic john williams soundtracks on on uh pandora yeah and uh as i'm like sitting there you know just completely exhausted the fucking Jurassic Park theme song comes on. And, da, 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 yeah. da, 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 and I fucking break down and start crying. <laughs> I'm like, you beautiful fucking dinosaur. Yeah. You Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. 
And like I had a corner at the designer con yep. uh, at, at, at that time. And uh, John Stokes, Spanky Stokes, mm-hmm. uh, saw that I was putting something together. And like he came over to the booth and he was one of the first guys that actually showed interest in it and like took his time for this crazy, insane person who yep. like, he's like, what is that? Yeah, tell me about it, man. And he's such a supporter and super excited about all this stuff and yeah so thankful to to meet that guy and like i sold two at the show i sold two makes it worth it two and of course like i i took it and uh walked around the 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 whole convention asking people like hey can you give me a critique on this i like totally cool if you could tell me it's trash like Mm -hmm. you can say that to me like let me know how i can make it better yeah and like instantly it was just on to the next thing on to the next thing how do i get better how do i make this uh even cooler because i know it's a little rough Mm -hmm. it's it's always going to be my darling so it's going to be my first one yeah but yeah look look at those it's beautiful theme lines on those arms and i love (laughs) those are the types of toys that i i love because it's like that's where this story starts that's the that toy it doesn't move but that toy Mm -hmm. is worth Mm -hmm. it oh yeah yeah how so, much uh, at your first design card? How much did you sell that for? Uh, one hundred and fifty bucks. Okay. And I priced it out because trying to recoup caught... some stuff. Well, it was just like the amount of it's three pounds of fucking resin, and yeah, a that lot... is not cheap. No, it costs pretty much like fifty bucks to make. To yeah, to <laughs> like for anyone listening. <laughs> The sample pack of most resins that you get from Smooth On are 1.9 pounds. Yeah. That takes two and a little bit more to make just yeah. one. No, I was buying gallons of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> And getting it on my arms and getting yep. resin burns and like, you know, I was wearing gloves, but it would burn through the gloves and yeah. like, uh, geez, man, it was such a crazy learning experience. I'm such an insane person, but, but I'm you, so, so happy that I did it. And you started it and I'm always fascinated, right? So mm-hmm. you created this character. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming at this time you didn't know that it was going to go like to the point where we're six years later and you're still with this character in new additions, new waves. And it has just well, alive for, for me. Like I've always had the foresight of where I wanted to go. Okay. It, it may not have been a, a guarantee of when yeah. I knew in my head, most likely five years. And okay. Wow. From, okay. From, from, from this point is like, if I can get past five years and eventually get a vinyl, Mm-hmm. Like within that five years, success. Oh my God. Did you hit that mark? You I did, hit right? it early. I yeah. hit it early. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, I never, yeah. because I entered the toy scene at 2020 and started seeing yeah. like all these things happening. Mm-hmm. I knew no one's backstory. So it's oh, okay. Dude. I'm glad that you yeah. hit it early. So like from, from the, the big beefy boy, yeah. I instantly was like, I never doing that again. Mm-hmm. So I started creating little chibis, like yep. little little super form, yeah keshis and stuff like that uh you know a basic drop mold like two-piece mold Mm -hmm. and uh something that i can reuse over and over and over and over again do blanks paint apps uh do keshi rubbers and the first show that i did with the chibis uh was robo toy fest which is actually coming up in i think on the 15th where uh uh, Pasadena. Okay. So it is a Robotech kind of GI Joe robot show, but it is a collector show. So people go there to actually buy stuff. And okay, so I'm, I'm going to Pasadena in yeah, two weeks is what yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. Well, yeah. shit. It, okay. It is my favorite show that Scott Zillner puts on. And okay. Scott is, I, I don't know if you know Scott personally, but he does Pasadena Comic Con, Power Morphicon, Robo Toy Fest, Japan World Heroes. Easy. Like the guy is a, a, you know, he's a big figure in the, in the, in the toy making community as well. Yeah. He's, he paints a lot of prototypes. He does a lot of the community outreach for Power Rangers. Like the guy's awesome. Really, yeah. really cool. Awesome. Uh, definitely somebody that if you haven't already scheduled, you should get him on here. He he would love to talk to you. I, this is word of mouth is how I get so many yeah. people and it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, I, through the first iteration of Ragnar, like I knew where I wanted to go. I got a little mm -hmm. taste of production and uh, I knew at all costs that I would make this happen. No matter and what it cost you or what it did. No matter what it cost, okay. what it did, how long it was going to take, I wanted to make a vinyl toy. I wanted to do that. That was like a, a big goal for me. And I and I had seen other guys like um, Javier, who is another, uh, he was originally a resin guy, and he makes uh, this little character right here. I don't know if it's oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've but seen yeah. that. Yeah. Um, he, and he's got tons of other vinyls but like that guy like he pretty much like an, another person like in the toy community where like you ask like hey i need a little bit of advice and like he'll actually respond yeah. and talk to you about the process much like neil ewing or um mark nagata or you know all, all the other guys out there but uh you know he took the time and told me like yeah it's gonna be a lot of work you know you i like you kind of give that typical like newbie speech yeah. of just like, hey, unless you love this stuff or love it and are really determined to make something, this might not be for you because it is mm. expensive. It is time consuming. Yeah. And uh, especially in the upfront, it's financially not like. Uh, Can you say that one more time for the people in the back? <laughs> The upfront, the upfront is never. Yeah, the uh, upfront, man. Like I max out a credit card, and like you know, I'm still paying off the the little bits of that thing. Mm. I'm just like, but it's still fucking worth it for me. Yeah, and I am. <laughs> yeah, I am an insane person. Yeah, and uh, you know, once I set my mind to something, I am completely determined to do it and like achieve it uh but a lot of people don't have that grit and uh yeah. you know especially for something that is so involved as this because you got to know how to you either got to you you either get <laughs> sorry you got to know how to sculpt or yeah. you got you got to know somebody that knows how to sculpt and then from there, you got to know how to mold and cast, or you need to know somebody that knows how to mold and cast. It's always, it's that, <laughs> knowing so many people. I, I, my dad once told me that as a little kid, and I never understood it until I entered the toy community. Oh, dude, it's all about yeah. who you know. It's all about who you know. And, yeah. you know, there, unfortunately that, you know, in this community and pretty much every other community, there, there is a lot of gatekeeping to knowledge. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, a lot of the guys out there they see it as like a threat to their livelihood um and i, I which think, i get i get i i totally understand yeah it. totally get it i understand it. you don't want to give your secrets away because you're you, you're either making money on it or it's your livelihood of you know that's your paycheck i yeah. i get it um but uh if somebody is passionate mm. and somebody is determined and they're willing to put in the time and learn um give them a little something you know, doesn't have to be, you know, the keys to the castle, but yeah. like just a little bit of advice. Yeah. And so answer me this question. Yeah. For some reason, you've brought up a couple of times yeah. um, and I want to dive into it. Why sure. is vinyl your end all be all goal at that time? Well, at the time um, and still to this day, uh, mm. I love the art form. I okay. just love the art form so much. Um, I think it's really versatile. Uh, you know, you can, you know, make essentially an action figure mm -hmm. uh, in vinyl. Um, you can have it articulate. Uh, you can do... And articulate better in most cases, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you drop it, it's not going to break. <laughs> Don't try it. Don't try. Yeah. Don't it try it though. Yeah. Don't try. It. Don't don't sue me. Uh, yeah. Don't don't message me. Don't yeah. at me, bro. <laughs> Two thirty year olds are not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, but I think they're just so much. It, it's so much more fun. Yeah. Um, in, in my opinion, and like the the statues and resin, like there is a place for that in my collection. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I definitely have a worry when yeah. picking up picking up those things but with vinyl like you know i can pick it up you know i can move the arms like i can move the head oh this is really really awesome this is really cool yeah um but i don't know just overall cool factor yeah <laughs> like, and honestly like, for, I, yeah i just yeah it's so it, good 
it's so good um i i definitely like the uh the other artists that mm. you know i originally first saw you know uh mark degada for sure yeah um and that guy is a total sweetheart and um i he actually i was fortunate enough to actually pick up a a paint app by him a uh, nice That's little beautiful. custom that he did if you because it's a podcast if you if i post yeah. a video or not it is like a holographic yeah. beautiful ragnar almost like a iridescent oil slick like so good yeah so so good that's what entices me the most about vinyl <laughs> figures uh, it's the the painting that can be done on yeah it. so like uh, another thing that really interested me uh, the more that i got into this is that uh and i've talked about this on you know other like I, I think it was streaming with uh Neil and uh Waylon, Waylon from Spamoni Toys. Yeah, yeah. Neil was awesome. oh Spamoni just put out yeah. some like his Kickstarter oh, was phenomenal. Dopest, dopest, yeah. dopest thing. I, I got five of those things. I'm gonna paint the hell out of them. And yep. like it, it's that situation of like you can buy a blank from somebody, like an artist, mm -hmm. and you can give that blank to another artist in a different country or somebody that the original artist doesn't even know. Yeah. And you can have a collaborative piece together, somebody's sculpt and toy and somebody's paint app. And that could have probably never existed naturally. Yeah. You know, they, they're they either in two different countries that don't speak the same language or don't, uh, you know, fall into the same like toy making groups or, or whatever. Yeah. But like, I can give, a friend a blank and be like hello friend can you paint this for me yeah with your awesome cool colors uh case in point uh my buddy serpico out in mexico oh my god the double cannon double cannon uh, blastoise ragnar this is so choice it's it is amazing beautiful this is so good definitely one of my my top pieces in my and collection. who painted that one Serpico. Uh, so you'll know him. I mean, if you just type in Serp uh, on Instagram, yeah, I'm sure it will come up. Maybe I should probably look up his. I got to do that right now because Serp nine three six six six. He goes by Joe Serpico, but that's not his real name. <laughs> Joe Serpico. Yeah. He's an amazing painter. He's based Boom. in Mexico. Uh, yeah. He does a lot of amazing work. I mean, that guy is so talented with uh, paints. Um, and he just came out with his own. Uh, I think it's Jigo Rider or something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, another weird, cool toy. I, um, so with vinyl and you, and like you're starting to go through these iterations and you're heading towards vinyl. Yeah. Um, I'm fascinated by processes on this show. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. what the hell's wrong with me. I want to know the ins Dude, and outs. It's, it's crazy. It's one of, one of my favorite things too. I, so, I'm an insane person when it comes to that. And I will talk process. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, it's because vinyl is different than resin. Like with resin and bootleg figures, yeah. Instagram, type that hashtag in. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. find every artist. Yeah. yeah. However, when you're working in vinyl and you want to get to vinyl, finding a factory is not as easy yeah so so dude uh it took me three years before i was kind of like allowed a a kind of inkling of who i should talk to okay and um and it's not so much like gatekeeping but it's almost kind of like a rite of passage they want to make a, sure you're in, here in a weird way because yep. um I'm sure the more time that you spend in the community, like, and like the more shows that you go to and you see the rise and fall of some of these artists and like, you'll see a traditional 2D painter come out of the gate with a vinyl and it will cost 250 bucks mm -hmm. and they get pissed that it doesn't sell. They get pissed that you know nobody was clamoring for for that vinyl toy yeah. and then they sell it the next year at a severe discount and it just like is you know bad vibes bad juju like it's just not yeah overall like it, it's just disheartening and kind of like uh you know it's just not 
stuff that you want to like see like uh and they start uh bad mouthing vinyl collectors mm. and creating drama that isn't there in the first place it's like dude you didn't create i mean you came out with a character a month ago or whatever yeah. and you started selling it and nobody knows who the hell you are you might yeah. be big in the painting 2d world and awesome if you want to make that transition awesome i highly encourage it do it do it do it do it but you really have to kind of like know your audience and mm -hmm. know the people that follow you and if you're a character artist that transition might be a lot easier but if you're yeah. like an environmental artist or like an abstract artist and then you just start putting it. something together yeah it's not not gonna be it but okay so factories like without let me yeah. preface this without yeah, yeah. giving away like because yeah. <laughs> i think that there are things that are rite of passage and i do love yeah them. So yeah. without giving away crazy things, describe what it looks like mm. to go through that process. Okay, so for for me, um, for any artist, regardless of field expertise, you know, architect or whatever, like find a mentor, find mm -hmm. an art mentor, find somebody in the community that you respect, find somebody in the community that, um, you know is active you know actually you know trying to promote or help out other artists you know especially you know if you find a mentor that you know you like their art uh and just start asking them questions yes, and yes. show the interest show the initiative uh nobody else is going to do this for you unless you have a lot of money mm -hmm. and even then like even if you pay everybody off, you pay a sculptor, you pay an illustrator, you pay somebody to consult and contract manufacturing like myself, mm -hmm. uh, it will show in the end product how much heart and how much hand you had on the, on the thing. It will show how genuine yeah. like that that little bit of your soul transferring into that toy, like how much you had to do with it. Um, like producing a toy that way a lot of people do it mm -hmm. but you can see at the end result that it's like ah, uh, this is yeah this is, this is somebody else's toy this isn't your toy this is somebody else's but um find somebody that you like their toys buy toys buy like actually go out look at how other toys are manufactured mm -hmm. have an understanding of how vinyl is pulled have an understanding of you know joint work have an understanding of like uh why why is this larger toy more expensive i mean larger toy cheaper than this smaller toy mm -hmm. well it could be the number of parts it could be the articulation it could be the material that it's made out of or the packaging or the limited numbers or the like there's so many different variables that you have to kind of educate yourself on and if you have like a basic foundation of knowledge of like what toys are and you know kind of like them as a whole then mm -hmm. people will actually start respecting uh the effort that you're putting into understanding the art form yeah and then they will start showing you how to produce in that art form and some people you know i i have an investigative background mm -hmm. uh i have over 10 years well, I think 12 years now as a field operative for a detective agency. So I know how to ask questions and I know how to find information and you just have to keep on pulling that thread. Yeah. Okay. Th this guy makes this. Okay. He's associated with this production company. Mm -hmm. Where's that production company? Well, I got to go find that. Who, who's the contact at that production company? Yeah. And send them an email and then send them an email <laughs> until you get an answer. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many times yeah. I've done something like that on Instagram <laughs> where I'm like, they make this, but I need this. I need to go find someone. Oh, it's, just, it, it's totally yeah. doable. But like, you also have to have like, you know, you have to be active in the community. You can't mm -hmm. just come out like out of left field yeah. and have people to take, like, take you seriously. Um, you know, I have definitely been shut down because mm -hmm. people don't know who I am. And I'm this crazy dude from California that's asking a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. And they're like, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. 
like uh right now one of my big things is pulling public records to track the uh, uh containers that the larger companies are are shipping overseas and finding the factories that way and finding That's out such a good way to do that <laughs> holy crap but 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 the, the catch is some of those factories use fake names. So you have to start cross-referencing with other producers and other creators. I'm giving too much away now. Yeah. <laughs> What's been weird is yeah. um because I, I work in 375 usually. Uh-huh. Um and I've thought about going kaiju status, like building uh-huh. a, but I'm not there. I, I yeah, don't yeah. want to be there yet. And um it's funny because I will like I function under Yucko Toy. So in my head, uh-huh. I'm like, I need to figure out. When I get to a point, do I want people, do I want a factory to start like doing this and injection Mm -hmm. molding and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, And I couldn't, I I was like, ah, like into the universe, like I need this to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, my Toys on Tap account was getting message after message from all these factories that were like, Mm -hmm. do you know anyone that needs injection molding? And I'm like, I'm not working with you. (laughs) You that gotta be careful easy. of that shit. Yeah, you gotta be really careful of that shit. Um, like they are and can be predatory. It uh, feels that way when they message me. Yeah. Um. So a lot of these places have like biggest one that is throwing the most like false weird accounts is Shenzhen R and D. Everybody's got an email and a message from those guys. Shenzhen. Every. I, that R&D. might actually be the company that sent me yeah, the message. Yeah, it, it, it will be like ZN R&D or ZZN or, or something like that. But they have like a whole army yeah. of outreach people. And I've seen some of the toys that they've made and some have been okay. Okay. But for the most part, uh, like you're going to have to really cross-reference their production. You can't just take them at face value and you have to make sure that uh, there is some sort of like known connection there. So like so-and-so got a toy produced by you. I'm a friend of so-and-so like, don't like, I'm going to send you $10,000 to produce my toy. Don't just run away. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I will find you. yeah, Yeah. 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 It, it's definitely like that. And, you know, I've heard the horror stories, you know, yeah. from every part of the industry of like, oh, I found this, cheap, excuse me, sorry. I found this cheap guy in uh, Southeast Asia. He's only charging me $2 per unit. And, mm. you know, the mold setup is like half the cost, blah, blah, blah. And I sent him the money and I haven't heard from him in six months. You're like yeah you you won't don't worry you won't sorry buddy yeah sorry buddy just kiss that money goodbye <laughs> i uh yeah i think about that stuff constantly yeah uh, because i just i i i take too long to pull the trigger on certain things yeah yeah so for me it took i don't know how to 3d sculpt and so mm-hmm. i'm working on a yeah. character that needs to be mm-hmm. 3d sculpted mm-hmm. So I prototyped it and did everything. And it took me months to figure mm-hmm. out which 3D sculptor I wanted to work with. And it was like, I had to go through several people yeah. and do that cross-referencing uh-huh. to make uh-huh. sure that that person was good. Yeah. And it came out great. So uh, yeah. awesome. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And like, there's a, like different, you really have to understand the, the craftsmen, like the, the yeah. person doing the work. Uh, you definitely don't want a line artist to paint you a Renaissance style painting. Right. You don't want a person who creates video game models sculpting you a toy. Because mm-hmm. they, it's just like, sure, yeah. would it look amazing? Yes. Is it watertight? And is it the joints work? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you you have to use the appropriate person uh for each project that you you take on and um there's like with factories there's a lot of brokers out there that pretend that they're company like they're production companies and it's just some dude in an office on instagram messaging people and getting that money (laughs) getting that money so you that that finding the factory is probably the longest part for you in yeah. this Ragnar process. Yeah. And once you did, 
what is that pro- it's like prototyping send back i don't like that i do like that no uh, back, right? well the, the factory that i worked with was reasonably easy to work with but um so through leaving gentle giant and then up until the first prototype of ragnar i yeah. i had kind of like gotten a lot of practice in working for other artists and like working for other smaller companies of like understanding joint work and like uh the sizing differences of production yeah. and like how it's gonna pull and so by the end of it like i had a perfect prototype and all i needed to do was send them the file they 3d printed it, yeah, 3d printed it uh at their factory they casted it in wax which is mm-hmm. like the first yeah part I of the of, of the soft vinyl and they sent it to me and they're like hey this is how it's gonna look and i was like do it just yeah yeah what are you waiting yeah, for why just, did i get this like, message thank you thank you very much i appreciate that yeah. everything looks good and um they created the molds and you know a couple of months later they started pulling vinyl and you know they'll, they'll send you pick like depending on how you want to work um you can be very hands-off and just mm-hmm. like whatever they send me is whatever they send me mm-hmm. uh but like with you can't dude you have to be with factories because mm-hmm. there is no room for interpretation with the like with these guys mm-hmm. you have to be exact like if it's not exact how you want it you have to really spell out how you want it give Mm -hmm. direction measurements color pan tones everything in between to make sure that they understand that the button on this is sideways not this way like you just have to make sure every single one of those details is correct because otherwise they they're they don't care it's just like to fucking get it done yeah they have 10 more orders behind yours they Mm -hmm. have to get this done you didn't say anything, so you've got <laughs> 400 yeah. toys at your house that look wrong because you didn't say anything. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So you order, like, you get to the point where you order, they arrive. Describe yes. that feeling. Describe the feeling you're opening the boxes Dude. of just craziness. So, Which, uh, do they come in boxes of, like, this is only the right arm, this is only the left arm? Every factory works a different way. Oh, Every bummer. factory has a, a different capability and some it that's fine. Like yeah. some will assemble and package in boxes or, or bags for you. Mm. And you have a complete figure ready to put a header card on and sell. Yeah. Uh, other factories, you know, if you want to save on shipping, they'll set, they'll put everything in a big old box loose in parts and mm. just send it that way. Scary. So I kickstarted Ragnar in the middle of the pandemic, early 2020, and, uh, you know, I didn't know how it was going to go. I was just like, I got to this point, I have to pull the trigger, Mm -hmm. um, kickstart it, and see wherever the chips may fall, that's where they'll be. Mm -hmm. So uh, it got some action, and then a little bit of a lull, like every Kickstarter, and then the days started counting down, and then it got funded, and I was like, Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. Money in the bank. I can make this toy. Sell yeah. it to, give it to all you guys. Cool. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without yeah. you. Yeah. It's like a tear. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, once you send that that money over to China or or wherever you're getting it manufactured, Taiwan, like Singapore, Vietnam, wherever, um, it's like you have to let go. Yeah. It's you do your best to try and do your due diligence to to make every safe choice and educated and experienced choice to get this thing produced. Mm -hmm. And, but once that money is out, it's gone. It's it's gone. You just kind of have to wait. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about it. I was working on other stuff. I was working on other toys for other people doing prototyping. Mm-hmm. And then I got a notification from the, the factory and he sends me tracking information. I'm like, oh, mm. cool. Awesome. It's 14 boxes that are 30 by two by two. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 I look, okay. 30 by two by two. That box is like a giant square. It's like a cof- coffin. It's yeah. like a fucking coffin. Okay. For, like 14 of those. 
Yeah. And uh, FedEx is telling me that it's showing up now. <laughs> so I was at work. Yeah. Uh, and I, luckily enough, like I got off and like started driving down because all this stuff is shipping to my house. And the FedEx guy is just sweating his ass off yeah. and just fucking, hey, buddy. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, sorry. This is, yeah, I, this is your job. Chill yeah, out. It, you work there. Yeah. <laughs> Boxes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Log- logistics, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll try Jeez. and make them lighter the next time. <laughs> Uh, and I just had boxes, yeah. boxes, boxes, boxes. And I just started pulling them into my house and creating like a giant wall. And I was just, okay. All right. You know, out of breath, sweat, I'm hot. And just like, all right, start opening them. Okay. Oh shit. Oh my God. Here's an arm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's the upper arm. Here's the shell. Here's this, here's that, here's that. And then grabbed a heat gun and started putting it all together. And as soon as... Can you as... explain that piece to me? Because I don't know vinyl much. Is okay. that so it makes it looser so you can pop it in? So with vinyl, um, once heat hits it, it starts to become more malleable. Mm-hmm. And um, the rigidity, it becomes almost like a dog chew toy. Mm-hmm. And depending on how the joints are and all that stuff, um, you heat up the the joint which is almost looks like a cone like a Mm -hmm. reverse cone and you're able to kind of like fold that and place it into the shoulder joint like where it's supposed to go yeah and then just leave it there and for the most part with like a little bit of jiggling or whatnot it will pop back into place and then over time it will cool and become more rigid again great so if you left this thing in your car on the the dashboard it will be like squishy it would be like "Mm, mm, mm." But it will um, go back to what it was. It will, yeah, it will go back to what it is. Okay. Um, and with like when you get a big old box of vinyl, um, and especially if it's in parts, sometimes the parts are kind of warped. Okay. So you have to heat them up and like kind of move them and stretch them. Well, not like stretch, but like, yeah. you know, bend them so that it's actually looking like your character rather than like a smashed car crash. Yeah. So... I got all the pieces together, hit it with a, a heat gun for a little bit, put it all together. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't plan on having kids, Okay. but it's the first thing that like, you know, this is the first thing of like bringing something into the world. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, <laughs> I'm going to clip that just for the yeah. show. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, like having them, him like Ragnar like, yeah he's my little kaiju buddy man you did it yeah like oh I I got like I, I'll tell you the truth that night um I got uh in and out like a nice little cheeseburger you oh, know yeah. like happy little me and then I put on my favorite childhood movie uh that Rocketeer. was it was Rocketeer and then after that, I hit uh, Transformers, 1986. There we go. And so it was me and Ragnar in my bed eating snacks. And I was just like, the, 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 life can't get better. Yeah. This, is, this is amazing. Look Hell at me. Yeah. Oh, my God. This... <laughs> <laughs> so all those boxes get there. You start throwing them together. Yeah. And then that is 2021-ish. Yeah, I I th- I would say no no no. Um, late twenty twenty. If oh damn, I I probably have to go back to my Instagram. Um, because that was following the Kickstarter, correct? Yeah, it was following the Kickstarter, but I did have it at one designer con. You had a, a table of them at this last designer con. You know what? It was twenty twenty one. When they when they all arrived, at least I, I'm pretty sure they did. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll correct myself if uh, I can't. Forty nine weeks ago. What's that? Oh, not even a year. Or, wait, hold on. That that was actually damn. Hold on. I lied. Sixty nine weeks sixty nine weeks ago. So okay. a, a year and some change. So twenty twenty ish. Ish. Yeah. Awesome. So they, they get funded, they ship, you start mm-hmm. building them all mm-hmm. and then packaging you have, uh, was, did your partner design the header card? 
No, um, so I got uh, John Bellotti, Robo7, mm. the infamous John Bellotti. Uh, he does a lot of amazing work for, uh, you know, a lot of toy designers. He does a lot of Godzilla prints. Uh, he does a lot of Ultraman, licensed Ultraman work. Mm. Um, he 